Alright, in this video we will look at creating some rust for this and uh, again just um, piling on the uh, the detail to these um, well what is relatively a small area of this. So uh, let's go and uh, just work on any layer above what you currently have and uh, we will go ahead and grab the pen tool which is um, not one we've used too much. I'm just going to set this to be a uh, blur color, I mean a blue color <laughs> blur color um, and uh, just click anywhere doesn't really matter and if you uh, if you hold down on your next clip you can see that you get these control handles to just kind of swivel around where that line is going to connect the um, the the, uh, the next vector point that you are creating so for right now I think what we're gonna make is some kind of uh, rust that doesn't imply battle wound alright and uh, what you'll see later is uh, we can also do this um, same thing to create what looks like battle wounds if we just make it a really sharp uh, or make sharp angles in this uh, this rust sort of spikier um, angles I should say so uh, once you get that done go ahead and pick out a rusty color and I think our sort of copper tone here would work just fine for that uh, I need to actually fill that in there and what I'll do is um, set this up to be about maybe 60 percent uh, then I'm going to just take a line cut it across there and then make this one just a bit darker we got something like that happening and um, what we can do is after the fact we can grab the entire thing and um, play around with uh, the alpha on it <clears throat> excuse me so uh, so you're not locked into those particular alpha settings that I just uh, gave you uh, but first let's go ahead and make it into a symbol so we'll just call this uh, rust one and here's where the fun really happens. What we'll do is we will go over here and uh, put a uh, a glow filter on it. Uh, just anything that's like kind of dark works good. And let's set this to being an inner glow. Fold these up so you can see it a little bit better. And then play around with both the blurring and uh, you can mess around with the strength a little bit too. And you probably want to set that up to high. Usually for an illustration, I'll I'll do hot, the high uh, quality. All right. Uh, once you've got an inner glow, let's also do an outer one. So we're going to do the same thing. Glow, and you can see just by putting in this uh, this black color for the 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 glow effects that it darkens it up quite a bit. Uh, and um, here we go. Let's set this one to uh, high as well. Actually, what I'm going to do is bump the strength up. You get something like that, and that definitely looks uh, quite a bit uh, too dark. But let's um, so let's get ready to set the alpha down. And what we can also do is play around with the uh, the blending as well. So if you see something that you think looks a little bit better, uh, I kind of like that. Oh, that's an interesting one. So there's a lot that can be done just by uh, toggling the blending on this. But uh, let's go back and let's see. What did I like? I kind of like the multiply. Let me uh, play around with the alpha just a bit, a little bit as well. And I definitely think there's such a thing as overdoing it too. Like this. Is a bit much. All right. <laughs> and the nice thing is, you can always go over here and uh, copy your filter settings, copy all filters if you uh, find a setting that you really like for your next uh, version of Rust. And feel free to just uh, play around with the uh, the colors as well and just see what a, what a difference that makes. So they were adding a little red to it, uh, maybe like a little brown. That definitely makes it look a bit rustier. So maybe I'll copy that one instead. And let's go ahead and do that in a few other places here. So 
just real quick. Uh, there's obviously not much rhyme or reason to, to what I'm doing here. I'm just uh, deciding at some point I'll turn it down with the uh, as the plane goes down. And again, let's make this one a bit darker. What the heck? Let's, it's kind of a dark color uh, behind there anyway, so let's just go ahead and set it to be almost black. Oops, deleted the wrong thing. And second guessing that. Let me. There we go. It's hard to see, but maybe it'll show up when we play around a little bit more. Uh, hit F8 on it. Let's uh, go over here to Paste Filters. Yeah, it's a little bit more obvious. And then again, let's toggle the alpha. And adjust the... Yeah, multiply looks good on that. And it definitely doesn't look identical to the other one too, so that kind of helps. All right, let's do a uh, a spiky one. So, in fact, let me zoom in a bit more. And this is obviously pretty easy. We're just making a very spiky shape. Yeah, do it spiky in some places and rounded in other places. And while you're, uh, once you've got that shape, of course, you can also use it to give some more detail to the original, just making it a bit smaller. Uh, let's go ahead and use this same one in a couple of places. I'll just flip it around, put it over here as well. If you wanted, you could even make it really small and um, tack it on to this one. sampling that same color, seeing how that looks. Uh, you kind of don't really notice it, do you? Maybe if we do something like that. Okay, let's uh, select these. Spiky. Uh, for these, we might have to adjust the, um, adjust the uh, filters a little bit. Looks like toning them down is probably the right move there. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and play around with the f blending modes. I do like to always cycle through them just to see if there's something better that I'm missing. And of course, the, it, it depends on different places where you apply them to. Like, I kind of like that, but I, this part, but I don't really like that part which is easily fixed. I could always just chop off that part of it. Uh, let's just go with the, the multiply again and I will take the alpha back down. So there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. It, uh, I'm starting to get the feeling that this is a little too clean. <laughs> our bar up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal the uh, the mask that we have and I'll just double click inside of here. Let's go ahead and paste that in and then let's uh, take that shape, copy it, come up this way, paste it in place and then just right click on it, hit mask and uh, there we go. That's starting to look like uh, 
Everybody else, isn't it? I might uh, move it around. It seems like that one little spot was kind of empty of detail. Okay, and um, let's see. While I'm playing around in here, let me uh, unlock this one. And just look at. Look at adjusting the color a little bit here. I'm going to lock all these other layers. Notice I took that bit of shadowing out there. And um, what I'd like to see, I'm going to sample this color. And see what it looks like to tone that down just a little bit. This side. Part of the problem is the, both sides of these are looking a little too similar, I feel like, color-wise. But if I was to have a preference about which one I think I'd like to be lighter, it would be this one. So maybe I'll go through here and just fix that up a little bit. And this one's kind of arcing down a little bit, so that could be maybe even a much lighter color. I think that's good. I'm gonna take the alpha down just a little bit on these because now I feel like their uh, their color tones are are matching that uh, this side here. Okay, let's um, let's go and fix up our little. Uh, Bit of metallic part on here, and uh, I think we could make this into a vent of some sort, which also would give us a chance to play around with yet another filter. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get rid of most of the lines in there. I don't want this; these two colors to merge, though. So I'm going to do something I should have done before, which is probably make that a slightly different color. I suppose it should be darker. Oh. oh, here's a lesson for you. Don't have that color selected while you're trying to change another one. All I'm trying to do is get something like that. Oh, let's just grab the color wheel. And offset it slightly. Okay, that's all we need to do. So inside of uh, inside of our symbol with everything else, I guess we'll just go ahead and um, do a little bit of shadowing inside of here and do the vent details. I'm going to call this um, shadows. Because one thing I want to do is kind of elevate this just a little bit and I believe all I need to do that is just grab a swatch that's about 40% of black and I'll just come through here and do this in fact it's probably even easier to do this And I'll do the same thing over this way. Just pull out another point. Go over there. And let me try one thing. Let's see what it looks like if I shadow about half of this whole thing and probably the best thing to do to, to do that would be to take the original shapes so take this this and oops, this this and that there we go I don't need a stroke art and then just paste it up on top of there 
right? Make it all black. Okay, so I've just done something like that. And then let's uh, take it down. And then what I'll do is I'll lock everything else. So I've just got this part right here. And um, now I can just play around with uh, doing something like this. I think that adds a little bit of something. Nice, nice little extra bit of depth. All right, let's uh, let's put in some vents here. So let's call this uh, shadows. And uh, probably just easiest to start with a line. So we'll just make this uh, pure black. This will be one of the times that we actually go with. Uh, oops, 100% black. And I'll make that be one. Uh, let me pull out and just look at how that, um, how the size of this is when I convert lines to fills on this. And uh, don't forget, you can do that over here. Shape, convert lines to fills. Uh, and when you do that with a, a line, it's uh, it's helpful just because you know that no matter what your uh, what your zoom on this, it's going to maintain that same even uh, width. Whereas with the stroke, it can sometimes vary. Okay, and I like that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste this, and just send it uh, down about 10 pixels each time. So I'm holding down the shift key, and I'll give myself a little bit of extra space right here, and then continue the uh, the vent down. And let's uh, zoom back out again. So I'm just when I do that, I just hit Apple One. It'll get you back to 100% or Control One on the PC. And let's see how that looks. Yep, that's a nice little bit of detail. Some uh, an easy trick you can do too is you can um, let's make this into a symbol. We'll just call it Vents. You can copy and paste that. Right. That's an easy way to double it up. But uh, what you could do is. Uh, copy and paste it right back in place. I'm going to nudge it over about two pixels. Then I'm going to tint it to a lighter color, like that color for example. And then you can just play around with kind of, um, oops, somehow that adjusted the uh, alpha. Did not mean to do that. Let's try tinting again. There we go. What I was trying to do is arrange it behind. So you can see how that uh, that has a little bit more dimension to it, and hopefully that shows up in your final piece. I think that does, and that's uh, that's obviously a trick that you can do in lots of different places, and um, there's plenty <laughs> plenty more room for random little vents and and things like that uh, throughout here. Uh, real quick, what we'll do is um, before we move on and add even more detail, let's go. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why I was seeing vector points there. Uh, let's go and uh, make one other layer. I'm going to just uh, use the pen tool again to do a little bit of a kind of random smoke coming out of the vent. As you can see, just holding down and clicking each time. And I'll fill this in with a white color that has the alpha down to about 50%. And then let's go ahead and uh, convert it to a symbol. So just hit F F8, smoke, and go over here to your bevel. Let's set the distance up to about that. And I'm going to adjust the strength a little bit too. Let me play with the blurring. In fact, you know, I'm not seeing the white, so let me. Um, I should be seeing some white from that bevel. Let me make this a little bit darker. Let's see if that helps. There we go. Now you get a little bit of um, two tones in there, the white and the black on the other side. And then let's uh, let's blur it. And uh, I think it does help to do this in the right order, to bevel it first, then blur it. Although you can try it either way. It's up to you. And now you got a little bit of smoke coming out of there. I'm going to adjust the pivot point, just put it right back down here. And what might look nice is to um, do two of them, one a little bit smaller and just kind of shift it off of the other one. Or you could even um, 
flip it around horizontally and have it kind of going in two directions. Uh, that wouldn't really make much sense with the wind though, but uh, there's just your second one there. And um, also too, uh, when you adjust the blurring on your smoke, that can make a big difference. So that's a good little amount of detail. And you could also go over here and just play around with um, these settings as well. Just uh, add, that'll add a little bit to the the pri your primary smoke or whatever one is your bigger one. So that's just something else you can play around with. That kind of looks good. I think it almost looks like it's sort of blowing a fuse right there. Okay, let's come back in a new video and we'll add even more.